Yeah, Ven is one of those players that comes straight from all the way from Brawl. He was literally a Brawl, uh, almost Brawl grinder, and then he went on to be... Oh my god, I apologize for you guys there. But I will change that for you guys. Yeah, but Ven came all the way from Brawl. He was definitely one of those, you know, young Zelda mains, but when he really came to his own hole in Smash 4, being one of the best Vegas players out there, alongside, of course, Foe, Grandmaster, and of course, Dak, who also decides in Vegas. Right, right, right. Well, I mean, we're going to be in into this game one here on Battlefield. It looks like uh, we got to update those names in the bottom real quick. We'll get that. There we go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Vander versus Piedmont. Right now, Piedmont doing a pretty good job uh, getting these projectiles going, uh, building up some good damage here. But it looks like Ven is going to be playing the more passive role. So it's going to be up to Piedmont to kind of uh, get in there. Uh, Ven with Zelda. Zelda has some pretty, I would say, stronger overall projectiles, allowing her to stay back a lot easier. And uh, Peanut, I mean, he does have good projectiles, but it's usually good against characters who aren't also zoning. Yeah, I think one of the things that I always give kudos to Ben is he doesn't play like every Wi-Fi Zelda you've ever faced. He's very much a defensive mix-up player, and it definitely shows with his ability to use Knight defensively and offensively, but also his ability, awareness of what he can do with Knight in situations where opponents wouldn't be necessarily comfortable or, more, or uncomfortable. Right, right, right. Here we go. Yep, kind of a very even game so far. We got Ven off stage. We'll see how Peebnut can answer. Uh, try to close something out. Not gonna be able to do too much. Ven kind of playing around on the stage here, getting some light situation and the lightning kick. Gonna be able to close out that first stock here. Ven with a pretty decent lead, but sitting about 109%. Peebnut should be able to close this out pretty soon, as long as he can find a way to kind of break through the zone. Yeah, I think the one thing about Ven too is that he is never gonna give a lot of stage control away for free he's really good at like okay my opponent wants to chase me down i have knight you either hold shield or you don't congratulations you held shield and now i can pressure you or find an escape all right here we go trying to get that edge guard oh got the ledge trump but not gonna be able to follow up it doesn't matter though the recovery not gonna be able to go straight to the ledge and people is gonna find that down air to get that spike yeah, and I mentioned earlier too, like look at the way where the knight was. It's pretty much pressure for Fiba to understand, like if I get off this platform, I will be hit by right. If I stay on the platform and I like on the shield, I will be hit by that forward. Air. That's the key knowledge, understanding like you kind of have to hold shield as much as possible, but also you can see then set up the knight there at the bottom of the stage where it's able to actually cover that angle and it forces Fiba to actually let go of the ledge a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And here we go though, Peebnut starting to get some of that pressure in there using that leaf, uh, leaf shield on top of uh, using the saw blade as well, just continuing to pile on this damage, being an absolute pest. Man, Ven is definitely kind of struggling here after a pretty solid start. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real with you guys, I love Mega Man 2, but if he had the real Mega Man 2 Metal Blade, this character would be all kinds of busted. <laughs> <laughs> and good stuff right there. Uh, unfortunately for Ven, going to buffer that air dodge and just going to lose that second stock. Keeping it off to a solid start here after... Uh, not a solid start, uh, but a solid run here after the rough start. Uh, when Ven just really had everything going in their direction. This is kind of where Zelda tend to struggles a little bit like she's so good at setting up the zone with those projectiles but the problem turns into the fact that um when she kind of like loses the lead it's like how does she make a comeback what does she do to do better here because it's not like she has a lot of tools to really control large portions of the stage so like and she's not really quick enough to really like rush down yeah she has she's definitely one of those slower mid-range characters that once you really eliminate the range in which she favors and take a lead, it's a lot hard for her to approach it with the uh, mm -hmm. mid-range because she has to commit to it. She's not fast, like, per se, your Ivysaur. Right, right, right. Like, Ivysaur has also got plenty of better options. Like, that Razor Leaf can go through so much. Her projectile options are really using the, uh, not Explosive Flame, Din's Fire is what it's called. Din's Fire or the Knight. And those are kind of like, they're not slow per se, but they don't really allow her the, the correct kind of movement like a, like a Razor Leaf would. But it doesn't matter. Piedmont going to be able to close out that first game there with a solid two-stock lead using that back air. Yeah, like you said, right, the right kind of movement there. And unfortunately, the event was kind of caught in the wrong kind of movement. Good stuff to Peep now, kind of taking it um, more into his own. I kind of blinked and I missed it, Skiff. Like, next thing I know, Peep was in the winner's was in the winner's lane, and then all of a sudden, Ven was the one losing, because when I, when I first opened my eyes, it was Ven with the lead here. But that kind of goes to show where Zelda has her shortcomings. I think her and Peach are two characters that do really well in terms of, well, Peach more so than Zelda, but like they do really well when it comes to controlling mid-range, but it's getting in to your opponent where it becomes rather difficult for both of those characters. 
Mm -hmm. More so Zelda than Peach Armor. Right, right, right. Well, yeah, we're going to continue on here. We're going to see this game two. We're going to see what kind of new game plan Ven can uh, try to push here, really. Um, I don't know. What do you think Ven has to do? We're going to see PS2, which is, you know, is a larger stage in that battlefield. So it kind of allows Ven more options to kind of control some more space, I think. But uh, it's still it's just a matter of can Peemut find a way in. Great grab right there. Not going to get that uh, the dare loops that uh, some Mega Man have been working on. But, I mean, still just a nice little opening. Yeah, I think when you when you ask like what can Ven do, uh, Ven is very much a aggressive defensive wall versus Peebnet who can be an advancing wall with the character that is Mega Man's toolkit. So you kind of have to look at Ven in the opportunities where he has to be able to shut down Peebnet, like options like that, right? Where Ven sets up the knight, plays a little bit of the aggressive, see what Peebnet's reaction, and then shut him down for his movement right before he can start setting up those pilots. Especially because pilots are just tremendously great for Mega Man, especially. In the game. And there we go, actually. Ven with a little bit of aggressiveness there, using that knight to kind of create uh, that advancing projectile, allowing Ven to kind of move up behind there and just get a nice little forward tilt. And now he's putting a little bit of pressure on the Piedmont here to teleport. Gonna send Piedmont off stage. Piedmont sitting about 151. Looking kind of similar to game one here, but the up throw gonna be able to close out the stock. Similar to game one, as in Ven has that early lead. And we'll have, just have to see if Piedmont can find a way to turn this around, though. Because yeah, today, like I said, right that it's that advancing wall where he'll set up and then Pima is forced to pick an option, particularly in Ben's favor. And Ben is really keen on catching those. So that's the one thing I always enjoy about seeing Ben's gameplay is like he's never using Knight just to use Knight in neutral. It's not only Ben's neutral winner, but it's Ben's game master plan. I would say. Mm -hmm. yep, using these Knights and Den's fire, trying to rack up some damage there, but uh. Yeah, gonna be able to move in a little bit. Now trying to get some pressure on the Peebnut. And that, that's a that's a really smart way to play the game with the Zelda. Zelda does actually have some pretty solid moves. So the fact that Ven is like using these projectiles to kind of move his way in, get a couple hits, and then also weeding right back out uh, just before, you know, the pressure gets too much for possibly, you know, Zelda. Because Zelda is susceptible to getting comboed pretty well if the opponent, uh, you know, can find that option. So yeah, uh, then... definitely right now, super good stuff from Ven. Yeah, and that's kind of the beauty about like what you can do with Knight. Is you can set it up as a defensive tool or an uh, aggressive tool at times. And literally, you can just go ahead and run behind Knight. And then if your opponent tries to play too aggressive, you can punish them for that play. Or you can use it defensively to push your opponent away. Or, as Ben loves to do it, you know, a setup play. So good forward tilt there, pretty fast. Not to get uh, Mega Man out of the way and already catching Peebut for going for that uh, Metal Blade. The one thing, he and I would pay attention here and understand that, you know what? Knight also has the same properties as Link's Shield, where it's always active. So if you're tossing in something like Metal Blade or, in this case, Crash Bomber, that shield that Knight has will be able to block it. Yep. Okay, uh, three up tilts into a Nair. A nice little bit of damage. Uh, Ven definitely doing very well here, building up this damage. Putting some pressure onto this final stock. Really putting Peebnut in a tough spot in general. Um, I mean, we see Peebnut, again, on the final stock at about 67%. And Ven just has, like, a whole stock lead and a teleport across the stage. Going to put some good pressure on Peebnut. Going to struggle to kind of land here. And the Knight to the Forge Death, not going to do it, actually. Wow. I literally held my breath for Peebnut. That was such a great play, because even if Peebnut was able to shield at all, he was going to risk a shield break. And I think people kind of knew that, and that's why we saw that play. Double, double roll into the night into the dense fire? God. I was wondering how many uh, kill streams we were going to see in this game, and it looks like that is definitely going to be the last one. Ben going to even up this series one apiece. We saw uh, oh, both these guys have made a very, very strong run into the loser's round here. Um, the winner of this takes on final boss, which is going to be a Bowser. And uh, <laughs> sitting at fifth place here, this is a tough spot. That, like, I don't know who I'd want to win. Uh, want, yeah, want to win this set, especially if I'm a Bowser player, because Ben obviously can control more space. And then uh, I feel like Mega Man can just be so disruptive for what Bowser wants to do. So um, it's very interesting. I wonder what final boss's thoughts are at the moment. Yeah, when I look at... <laughs> I think what Final Boss is probably looking for is maybe the Mega Man, just because he knows that he can tough armor through, I'm sorry, tough guy through a lot of Mega Man's pellets, which is mm -hmm. something that gives Mega Man a little bit of a run for his money in the matchup. So that's really, that's what Final, and that's one aspect of that matchup between Mega Man and Bowser. For Ven's sake, and the reason why we kind of saw Peeb that kind of stuck on that platform is it was the setup that Ven had played out there. You can see he had Knight to cover the platform itself and the stage. If Peebna jumped, Ben would have called that out with 
of Zelda is beautiful forward that has great knockback. And then literally Pete Mill would have lost the stock. So that's where we kind of saw that interaction we saw last game here. But of course, game three, this is pretty much uh, opportunity for both players to put themselves at set point. Let's see how things happen. All right, and here we go. Uh, as Ven's going to start out with an opening of about 60%, which is not too bad, but trying to get that extra extension on the lightning kick, not going to be able to get it. He's not going to hit her back. That fist just flying straight back up. It's, it's so funny watching how uh, Mega Man's down air kind of interacts with something. So, like, we saw with the Dinspire, he just shot right uh, back up. If DDD actually inhales the fist, he just shoots it straight, like, out. But it's still, like, it's angled like it's going down. It's a really funny situation. <laughs> yeah, it kind of works the same. It, the one thing that I've seen act very differently is probably uh, Pac-Man's Hydrant. It just moves in place and it doesn't go, like, straight back up. Yeah. That was great. Right, great. Nice. Good on good on him to also hold the shield there, just because the explosion hitbox that will come out and crash back. Can also hit Mega Man with this arm as well. Mm -hmm. You can see how Ven is kind of. I, I wouldn't necessarily say playing like Link, but he has the setup with the knight. He uses Din Fire, and he's trying to force him to go for the jump, in which the knight can swing the sword and also catch that. So that's very smart from Ben. Yeah, there we go. Pima going to be able to get back on the stage there, uh, creating a little bit of pressure while off stage and just kind of rolling right into that up tilt just to get Ven out of his face. So good stuff so far. Trying to use these platforms jumping in between them just to get something going, man. <laughs> oh, the yeah. dash attack. Wow. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. Like, there are some moves that Zelda has that you just wouldn't think would kill, and then she kills you with them, and dash attack is definitely one of those moves I have to agree. It's one of those moves. So good stuff here, setting up Knight once again to inspire. That's really good. You see that game plan from Ben because he wants Pima to either commit to a roll, commit to a jump, into which Ben can obviously catch that with either the Knight swinging swords for himself or even Ben making an approach as well. Yeah, and that's that thing. There's that Knight. So Ben has been getting these uh, Knight setups pretty often. Uh, kind of, and like, like you said, like a defensive mix-up. Like one time they'll be throwing out the Knight and kind of jump behind, getting that Din's fire. And the next time they'll be throwing out that Knight. And all of a sudden they're advancing. Like we saw with that dash attack earlier. And uh, we, we also saw as the Knight was charging. Oh, wow. <laughs> I need to stop talking about that. Hold up. Okay, so we got the Crash Bomber and Beam Knight was just sitting at the top platform ready to hold for that with the up smash to just close out that second or that first stock for Ben. That was actually really beautiful. It's because you're here, Skip. See, he knows your voice and he's like, you know what? This guy commented me and Animatic Gucci. I got to put on the hype for my man Skip. So good shout out to Beam Knight. Able to catch that confirm off the Crash Bomber. Yeah, no, Beam Knight actually made a hell of a run in that, uh, that Mega Man tournament. But yeah, so as I was saying before, though, like you brought up, um, he either will d dive behind the knight and kind of get that Din's fire going, or like we saw earlier, he gets that knight going and you're ready, you're already ready to shield it. And all of a sudden, Ven's behind the knight, either with the dash attack. We saw earlier, uh, they, they advanced before the knight, got the nair, and then the, the knight hit, uh, got extended the, the combo. It was a whole, all sorts of crazy stuff. Ven, Ven is definitely on top of this character and definitely showing why they're one of the best. Yeah. You know, here looking to not give up himself from the ledge. He knows, like, if I want to come towards center stage, I am where in a zone that I can potentially get into Zelda more, I have to be very cautious because if I am overzealous, then I will be caught by a lot of situations. Like, you can see, right? Ben came out there immediately with all the aerials and the hitboxes to kind of catch um, Peanut from being oh. the center stage. And that was a great grab. See, that's the mix up there is Peanut's holding shield, and that's the right set of play, right? You don't want to get hit by all those moves, but if you hold shield too long, Ben's just going to grab you, and there you go. You get hit by Knight or Fourth Row. You know, uh, some beautiful stuff from Ben right now. Ben definitely has the momentum here, setting the tempo, uh, really dictating the entire pace of the match so far. Uh, either, and it, a lot of it comes down to that knight, and it's not just sitting behind the knight and just letting it go, because, I mean, we, we all know that's kind of like the typical Wi-Fi Zelda. No, Ben's actually getting those mix-ups in, like we saw with that grab, and just waited there for the knight to get the, uh, to get the killing blow instead. We saw a few other conversions with the dash attack as well, so Ben is just playing this matchup beautifully right now, as Peanut's really trying to struggle here. Uh, chasing Ven around, just trying to get him off stage. But look for that down there, not gonna be able to get it. And now we're gonna see what the option is here. Just gonna <laughs> disengage from each other. <laughs> just try to reset neutral, I guess. Yeah. Here, oh, that was good, that was good. He knew that the only place Pima was gonna go is go for a jump to avoid Knight and avoid maybe the the walking in pressure. So then Ven went for a downer to kind of call that out. But good stuff to Pima. He was able to get away enough. Once again, setting up the Knight, that's gonna be at the ledge. Watch the sword swing there. That was a great cover. Yeah, no, uh, I do want to give a shout out to Peeve though. To oh, wow, beautiful. Getting the drag down back there into the actual back air for the kill. 
Uh, good stuff from Peeve, but Peeve's been doing a really good job of uh, landing these crash bombers at higher percents. And then just like waiting on top of that platform for Ven to actually just kind of shoot right up there as the explosions go off. And he's been able to convert into one stock earlier and then a uh, just extra damage there with that up tilt. So super good stuff. And it's something I actually learned about Mega Man with the crash bomber is you actually get launched in the uh, direction opposite of where you're facing. I thought that was very, very neat. <laughs> Neat indeed here, and hopefully Ben is looking for a neat victory. Literally, look at having Peanut at 113. You can tell Peanut is trying to slowly ease his way in, as he should, right? Look, taking that center stage and then playing the more close quarters combat, which is an area that Zelda is not able to defend herself that well, because it does take her time, and she has to retreat to do this night here. Can Ben get the grab? No, but it's Peanut here with the back throw and the setup. Yeah, no, all of a sudden, like, we saw Ben just... Absolutely could try, like I said earlier, dictating the pace of this game. And now Pibna is on the offensive, has been on their heels, just continuing to put on this pressure, getting this damage and oh, looking for that backer to close out the game. Not gonna be able to find it. Knight now in play. And oh no, the Din's fire is what's gonna close this out. He made such a good comeback. Unfortunately, it's just not gonna be enough as Ven will close it out there. Uh, two to one now. This game four is gonna be very, very important. Yeah, you can see that Ven kind of had the, I wouldn't say the mix-up, but the right call there. He knew that Pima might have th th saw that Pima through the middle blade, and then that gave Ven the opportunity to go for the Dins Fire. But you can also see that Ven had originally set up for Knight with the forward smash to see if Pima was going to try to roll in on Ven. Um, that was just great play. And I kind of want to give a shout-out to the chat here because they're aware that both of these players have great offline results. I, I, I want to let you, Skiff, talk about Pima, but like I'm going to talk about Ven here. And... Ven is probably the only player in the entire, for me, in my experience, Ven is probably one of the only players that I've ever seen in the West Coast that's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against foe consistently and able to place, be one of some of the highest placing Zeldas out there in the offline scene. Yeah, no, um, yeah, Ven is one of the few Zeldas I hear about consistently, like you've mentioned, but Peebnut, uh from South Carolina, I don't know too much about him and from the offline perspective. I do know he's a very, very talented Mega Man. Like, do not get me wrong. There's like, there's certain Mega Men that you think about um, when the characters discuss. Peebnut is definitely among them. So yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know much about them in the offline scene, but I do know online, they made a very strong run recently. I don't know about much of their results after that, but still, very strong competitor. Right now, uh, has got the, uh, has got one win on Ven here, trying to find a way to even this up to get to a game five. And so far, uh, kind of doing pretty well. Never mind, <laughs> Ven's really starting to get that pressure going. Yeah. Oh, Ven, like you said, right, there's the pressure here. It's kind of like Ven telling people what's the option so that they're going to have, right? Are you going to be jumping? Fine. There's the upper, there's my call. There's my, so to speak, victory. Someone in the chat letting me know that Peep is actually taking games off Arfang offline. Arfang, also very talented PQ player, for those unaware. Uh, I mean, that, that's a good win. I, I believe Arfang is PGR'd, if I'm not mistaken. So, obviously, if you're able to take games off PGR players, and even just players right outside of that PGR area uh, offline, you're definitely a talented player. Peebnut is 100% uh, <laughs> up there with those... Uh, wow, excuse me. Up there with those players as well. Yeah, and especially when it's Pichu against Mega Man, one of them. <laughs> Pichu is not easy to deal with. So good stuff here. Ven coming back on the stage here. I goes for the jump there, able to avoid the back there. Here's yep. the nice and uh, yeah, got that lightning kick to kind of close out that second stock. And uh, as much as I was trying to gas up even a little bit, a little bit here. Uh, Ven is currently on the offensive here, just absolutely piling on damage, taking stock after stock, and about to actually overlap right there as we see it, getting that lightning kick to almost, not necessarily secure the stock, but just continue, oh, went for it all, oh man! Oh yeah, you can see it from Ven, he's immediately going for Fowler's win, because he knows you can catch opponents holding shield or letting go of shield, and you can actually take some cheeky stocks that way here. Able to go for the upper, great play, he's able Ooh. to still survive from the downer there, you can tell Pima is out of the fight here, and here he is catching him with the up smash, great stuff, Pima, like I said, right, he's, he's a little bit behind, but hey man, he's definitely got some skills to show that he's not going to be sticking without taking the stock first. For sure, for sure. And I mean, Pima is sitting here at the final stock at 123. So Rage does kind of come in here a little bit, but this might be an uphill battle. It just, it's a hill too steep. 
But we'll see if p is able to make some sort of comeback here. It would be taken uh, nothing short of a miracle at this point. Because Venice is doing a very, very solid job. Again, dictating the pace, controlling the tempo here. Uh, using that knight to really mix things up. And p it looks like they're struggling. Did he catch the metal blade? He did. Oh, man. Yeah, I kind of want to go back and see a little bit just how p played this. Because he is the one move that i'm not really seeing him using in mega man toolkit is razor on some reason uh, leaf shield and it's a very very solid move to, that, can, that can go through a lot of zelda's projectiles especially through knight and also hit zelda that has a great range so that's kind of one of those things that you haven't really seen being used so much in the toolkit yep and so far uh oh scary spot to be in. okay didn't get the setup that i think they were looking for here oh but gonna get that weird hitbox on the teleport pharaoh's wind just doing some crazy stuff the crash bomber actually going to hit peep nut and the knight is going to clean it up as we see ven move on in the top eight bracket to take on the final boss yeah, that was a tough spot here where Pima happened himself. I'm like, he put the Crash Bomber in a good situation so that if Zelda wanted to potentially go for like an edge guard there, she'd have to worry about the explosion. But that's the problem. You never see Ven go for that kind of edge guard. 